Hi, welcome back to the Papa Bear at Home podcast. Um, for those of you who are first joining us here, welcome. Uh, I know we have a couple new subscribers, so I much appreciate you guys clicking that subscribe button. Um, I know that you probably have come over from my shorts, and now I'm going to talk a little bit more long form on a podcast here. And the one for today is strategies for staying mentally fit, uh, especially for fathers. So. Uh, as you've probably seen in a few episodes or a couple of my clips so far, I'm a dad, I've got two kids, I've got a third kid on the way, and staying mentally fit is something that I am working on. It's a, it's a new project. I wouldn't say a new project for me. It's just something that I am putting a greater emphasis on uh, as we come up on this third child. And, you know, it, it's it's become kind of... I don't know, kind of, kind of my calling around here, around my house. I'm really trying to be better, a better person, and a better dad, a better husband, better partner, and you know, a better friend for my wife, my friends, my kids, etc. You get it. So, the importance of self care for fathers. Uh, gosh, it. I mean, it affects everything within your kids' lives, uh, particularly for. For those of us with sons, the sons look to their fathers a bit more for modeling specific behaviors and mental health patterns. And, uh, you know, study after study has shown uh, the importance of having a, a good male figure in your life as you're growing up, in a child's life as, as they're growing, as far as how well they cope with life further on down the road. And part of that you know, it's not just having a dad at the home, but it's having a positive role model. So part of that positivity, uh, especially now, is mental health. Uh, you know, historically speaking, you know, if I look back into when I was growing up, it was how good am I at sports? How good am I academically? Um, you know, what what kind of rewards can I bring to the table that would bring pride to our family. Uh, I mean, it, it, that's a weird way to say it, but uh, what can I, what can I win? And what can I achieve? And that would kind of be the benchmark for what I, for how I grew up, and as far as the happiness that I brought around to my house, and what I want to reflect moving forward around my house is how are you feeling? How how are you doing mentally? I understand that you might have struggles at school, you might have uh, kids at school that are bothering you, uh, you might have subjects in school that aren't your favorite, you might have, uh, I, I don't know, maybe your brother's bugging you like crazy, uh, just here around the house and I'm not seeing it, just how are you doing, that's what I want to be the center. And I think that that's kind of where this generation of fathers is. Um, and I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. And I think that's really healthy for us moving forward. So, uh, things I want to talk about today as far as strategies for maintaining your mental health and what I'm working on currently is we're going to talk about exercise, uh, meditation, which has become a real big one for me. Uh, we're going to talk about therapy, which is another big one for me. And uh, the, the fourth one is hobbies. And uh, we'll, we'll get into the importance of all those for a little bit. So, talking about exercise. Um, gosh. Talking, talking about exercise. So, this is something that I haven't done enough of lately. Uh, but it's something that I do hope to get into better with the, with the spring coming. Um, you know... A healthy body can lead, lead to a healthy mind. You know, it, it's a whole system that goes into making us available and, and there for you, for your family. And, you know, I, I said to my wife not long ago, I'm really tired of being just kind of the on-the-couch dad. I don't want to keep being that. Uh, I want to get up, I want to do things with my kids, I want to have fun with the kids. I'm tired of 
then knowing that they can come find me sitting on the recliner, just chilling with my phone, maybe playing on the computer, you know, I want them to come to me and say, hey, I want to go for a walk or I want to go for a bike ride. And they'd be like, yeah, perfect, let's do that. Um, you know, if they want to say, like, hey, let's go to the park, great, we've got a couple that are within a few minutes walk of here. I want to be able to do that. And so that's what, where I'm going to start is with walking. And I think it's a very, very nice, low impact, but very good for you exercise. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort you, just to get out there and, and take a nice walk. And, you know, it'll help improve your cardiovascular health. Uh, it's also a good place for you just to get out and clear your mind. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of benefits to you getting out there and taking a walk. So that's one of my goals coming up here is is getting out, taking more walks, shedding a few of the pounds, and, and then getting more involved with the games that my kids want to play. So... Uh, it, that, you know that's the the quick and dirty for exercise. We all we all know why exercise is important to us. Uh, everybody's got to pick what they want to do as far as how you decide to exercise. You can do the weights. You can go to the gym. Uh, you can make your own home gym. Uh, maybe you got a buddy. You know. Um, and on that note, uh, having a friend doing it with you also helps because then it's very easy to say. Uh, I'm not going to get up and go for this walk today, or I'm not going to go to the gym today if it's just you. But if you have somebody that's relying on you to, to meet you at the gym or who is coming to take that walk with you, then that just so, I want to say incrementally, it's just, it makes it so much more important and so much easier for you to actually get out the door and go do that workout. So I highly recommend if you've got a buddy who's willing to work out with you and do some form of exercise, get that friend on board. I, it'll, it'll make a huge difference. I, that's what got me my last time I was regular with fitness was having a group of friends that actually wanted to get up and go and get up and go take walks, long, like long walks, lift weights, go running, etc. And so having that friend's been real important. Uh, the next one I, I want to touch on therapy before I head into motive, uh, to, to meditation. So therapy, obviously, you know, we exercise our bodies to work on our heart and our cardiovascular system and our muscle, mus muscles, muscles, um, therapy is where we exercise our mind. I mean, along with meditation, when I'll get into that, but Therapy, having like an impartial person for you to talk to about some of the issues that you've had and just kind of work through and walk back what's going on in your life. Even if things are going great, uh, there's always something that can be improved. Therapy can be low cost. Uh, I mean, there's all sorts of resources for you to get out there and get, get a therapist. Uh, one of my favorites right now is is um talk space that's what I'm, the the that's the therapy platform i'm currently using i'm using them because my employer has an employee assistance program which a number of employers have now and they provide access to counseling uh, ours provides five counseling sessions per issue we've got a bunch of different issues that we can get codes for so you can get a, i can get a whole bunch of therapy uh, provided by my company um, to my own therapist. It's not like they're providing it or anything. Uh, and it's been a, a knocked down a huge barrier for me, which was the cost of things. Um, but on that note, if you're, if your employer or, you know, doesn't provide a, a program like that, or your health insurance doesn't cover enough of it, um, or even if you're out of work, and you still want to see a therapist, still call that therapist and let them know your situation. A lot of them are willing to work with you on their cost and even payment plans. Um, you, you know, you can even talk to, uh, call, call to your local colleges, see if they have like a, um, a psychology program that are looking for uh, patients for, for their up and coming therapists. 
just any any of those resources reach out try to find somebody to talk to um you're not always your best friend up in your mind i know i'm not i've, I've mentioned before i struggle with depression with anxiety uh, and panic disorder and insomnia and adhd and it it's very easy for me to get inside my own head and not where not know where i want to go and I can be a very harsh self-critic uh, without any constructive criticism. I can, I can list off all sorts of faults, but I'm not ready with uh, any ideas of this is how we get out of it, uh, this is how we got here, this is how we, where we need to go, none of it. I'm, I'm very good at saying you've done kind of a crap job lately turn it around and that's about the end of it the therapist is able to kind of walk back and say well this is where you seem to think that you're faltering but you're actually already making good strides towards it which number one is already a confidence boost but number two is you can then be like while this is what you're already doing right maybe we can stop doing this and add in these activities and these kind of thoughts and processes. And that'll help you kind of along your way. You smooth things out a little bit. And that is just super important. And sometimes it's nice to hear that even those little, even though you think you're making a bunch of mistakes, the fact that you're actually putting yourself out there is already a huge step. And it deserves a, its own pat on the back. And therapists are great for that. They're also great at telling you when you're not doing something right. So, <laughs> uh, so be open to a little bit of criticism, but it's the therapist is there to help you and they're there to help you even when you think nobody else wants to. And if you find the right therapist and you guys click, it's, it's awesome. And if you find that the therapist that you've chosen isn't for you, then by all means, find somebody else to go to. You're not signing a contract with them. You're not marrying them. If you find a, if you find a therapist that you're starting to talk to and you're like, this, just, this, this doesn't feel right, this isn't working for me, walk away. They don't, they're not going to hold a grudge. They all understand. Uh, that's why there's so many out there and there's so many options and there's so many different types of therapy. Uh, do some research on the different types of therapies if you want to ahead of time so you kind of have an idea of, of the direction you went ahead. But uh, the, be the, the best thing you can do is get in touch with one and just see where it goes, see where it leads. So along with therapy and that kind of being our mental exercise the next step would be meditation and this is one that i've recently started after reading a a, a, a book um, why buddhism is true and i do recommend that people go out and read that book it or listen to it on uh, as an audio book uh, i use the, the libby app l-i-b-b-y uh, none of these things are sponsors, by the way. I'm not getting endorsed by any, anybody or anyone. Uh, obviously, with I think nine subscribers at this point, I'm not getting I'm not getting endorsed or sponsored. Um, these are just the apps that I use. Uh, anyway, so the Libby app, you can go, you can enter your library card number. Uh, if you don't have a library card get one it's free and especially for an app like libby where everything's digital you can rent book you can rent ebooks and you can rent audiobooks they've even added some online magazines um, you just put in your information there you're able to borrow stuff for up to like two weeks and you can renew it if you need to you can listen to it in your off time and i've been working my way through a ton of books but lately it's been a bit more on the self-help side of things and uh why would it, why Buddhism is, holy cow, Why Buddhism is True is one that I've recently finished. I'm on to my next book from now. Uh, but it, it talks about the importance of meditation and uh, mindfulness meditation and 
it's a very non it's not excuse me non non it's a very secular look at Buddhism. Uh, it's, it looks at it more as a philosophy than as a religion, so it's not preachy by any means. It just kind of talks about the habits of, of the thought process that goes into Buddhism and the thought processes behind their different types of meditation. And it was very insightful, and it kind of it got me very interested in taking a step into actually going out and, and uh, meditating. So I looked up a number of resources. Uh, if you've seen on my page, I have my 30 day meditation challenge. So f for me, I'm doing 30 minutes every day for the next 30 days uh, of meditation each day and probably some extra uh, al along the way each day as I find time. But um, the 30 minutes are, are the periods at the end of the day when I sit and reflect and I'm using these guided meditations. So I'm also adding links to those videos. Uh, for the guided meditations that I'm using for that day. So if you're looking for some resources, uh, one, you can take a look at me meditating. Uh, I got Body Like Buddha. It's it's pretty great. Uh, but two, if you go into the description of any of those, you can find the meditation that I've used for that day. And uh, I'll talk through what I found helpful and what I found distracting, uh, along with what's kind of going through my head with these different meditations. So. Uh, I highly encourage you to take a look at my shorts, especially the playlist Zen with Ben. If that's me, Ben, not just Papa Bear. Um, so yeah, really take a look into that. Meditation, uh, especially after this previous therapy session I had this past weekend where, uh, where I talked with uh, my therapist, uh, she said that like, the number one thing that she recommends to her patients uh, is meditation. And if you're willing just to give it a try, give, treat it like I am, take this, take, take a little, make it, make a personal challenge to yourself to actually give it a good try and meditate. Uh, use, use my playlist uh, <laughs> as a shameless plug for, for views. Um, find the resources, find the right guided meditation, get a good space. You'll really clear, clear your head and get to a spot where I, I think you'll start liking yourself again. Uh, I've only been doing it for a few days now and it's given me some good insights into how my brain works and how I can redirect myself and you know we're only a few days in uh, so I, I can't say enough about it but um, I'll leave it there so I, I guess that will be enough. So uh, the fourth thing that I wanted to say was hobbies. Find yourself a hobby. Um, this is my current hobby. I'm learning how to do YouTube and video editing and podcasting. Uh, it's always been kind of a fascination of mine, especially since I spend so much time watching videos on YouTube. Uh, now I get to kind of experience what it's like to be on it. And eventually my kids will be able to see that I'm on YouTube as well. And it gives me a chance to kind of make cool sets, kind of like I have behind me, which I just set up today. And that was fun. It really made my ADHD uh, very excited to kind of get in on, on, on a project. It was fun. Um, but anyways, hobbies. It, the importance of a hobby is that it gives you a good chance to actually sit and have uh, some time to yourself doing something that you really enjoy. You know, maybe you like making model planes, maybe you like making uh, dioramas, maybe you like video games. I also like video games. Uh, but my current computer isn't the best for it, so I've kind of stepped back from my video games a bit. But find that one thing that you really enjoy doing. <laughs> Just use it as your getaway. Uh, take some time for yourself. You know, that was, my, my wife and I did couples therapy just to kind of dial ourselves back in. And one of those things that the therapist there stressed was making sure that we had time for ourselves. You know, not making ourselves available 24 7 365 for our wife and kids obviously we're going to be there for them that's what we do for dads uh, you know i hope if you're here you're not just the sperm donor who's who's walked away uh, or if you are you're on the path to trying to get back into their lives which in that case bravo i, I salute you on, on getting back on track but 
make sure that you take some time aside for you for yourself to do the things that you enjoy um what was that phrase from the shining all work no play makes jack makes jack uh, uh you, you you guys can look up the reference i'm not great with quotes but yeah make, make some time for you it'll, it'll that too will make a difference so those are my big four things for staying mentally fit as far as parent or being a father goes but what you know what are the common barriers for it um the biggest things you hear are oh, i don't have time for it uh so as far as time goes you know i set up this whole 30 minutes a day thing you don't even need to do it that long my therapist recommended at least five minutes a day for me to, to do meditation uh, everybody can find five minutes a day that they can sit and do a quick meditation uh, if you can find more time awesome do that even if you want to take more time than that but you can just break it up into small chunks throughout the day take those little chunks at, and you'd be surprised about just how much time you waste throughout your day that you can put towards bettering yourself uh, another of those things is guilt uh, you know i'm talking about a lot of different things that take time away from your wife and kids and you got to be okay with it your family will support you as because as you're going through this journey they're going to see you getting happier they're going to see you becoming a better person and in turn becoming a better partner and a better dad and a better friend you know this journey might take time away from them at first but i think at the end of it it's going to give them that time back tenfold so don't be afraid to take that time away don't feel guilty about it you you should feel guiltier if you don't take these steps if you don't get out there and try to better yourself that's when you should start to feel that guilt not when you're taking steps to better yourself and then finally stigma um there's been a stigma for a long time that I think we're, I think our generation is finally starting to kind of get past that uh, men don't need to talk about their feelings, dads don't need to talk about their feelings. Uh, mental health for men has always been kind of a joke to this point. And we're finally to a time where it's accepted and starting to be expected that men are going to go through therapy and get those feelings out. You know, uh, it's it's okay if you need to go have a good cry everybody can use a good cry every once in a while uh also showing that vulnerability within yourself to your kids is healthy for them to see as well it it's healthy for them to understand that it's okay to be vulnerable and to come to those people who who you love and who you were just so in tune with that you can come to them with any problem you be that person show them that you're that person and show them that they're that person too i think you'll get a lot of respect out of that uh, so don't feel guilty about it start making yourself more of a priority than you have in the past and that's what i'm starting on now uh i'm really looking forward to it i know my wife's looking forward to it too my kids, if they had any concept of the future, would also be looking forward to it. Uh, so, you know, I hope that they reap the reap the benefits of it soon. So, so wrapping it up here, um, self care for us dads is important, not just for ourselves, but for the family unit as a whole. And the sooner we can start acting on on that the sooner our families can heal and better themselves uh you know we talked about my my before big things to hit on was exercise find a way to get out and exercise uh or even f stay in and exercise uh, you can make time for it <laughs> two therapy uh there's all sorts of resources for therapy out there just just look for just go out and look for them I recommend if you do have insurance, uh, look look at psychologytoday.com. I'll put that down in the description as well. Uh, it's a free resource that you can put, you can plug in, search for therapists in your area. You can even narrow it down to uh, location, uh, 
type of therapies that they provide, the insurance uh, providers that they, or the, yeah, the insurance companies that they work with, uh, issues that they treat. So it, it's a wealth of, not, of information for therapists in your area. So I highly recommend using that to try to find somebody. Um, and then meditation. Uh, find a way to meditate. Find something that speaks to you. I recommend looking here on YouTube for guided meditations. If you're looking for a quick resource, take a look at my Zen Within playlist. I, I'm only a few days into the video, so I only have a couple of links up right now. But as I go through, I will continue to add the links for the guided meditations that I use, as well as any any readings or books that I've used recently uh, that I think have, have been a big help. And then finally, uh, hobbies. Find something you enjoy. Get out and do it, man. And have some fun. Everybody deserves it, and especially you deserve it. Uh, just get out there, have a ball, okay? You guys are doing great. Uh, you don't get enough credit for what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I love you guys. And I, ho I hope you guys return again. So thanks for watching this week. Uh, those of you who have been here from the beginning, thank you. Stephanie, Dave, I know <laughs> you, you guys let, let, let my wife know what's going on. Thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.